Good evening. You ready? As your city manager, I am honored this evening to present to you my proposed budget for fiscal year 24-25 for the city of Durham. As our city council and staff know, our administration begins working on our budget in November of each year. To some, it might seem like a routine process of projecting revenues and expenses and walking a tightrope to make equal or balanced as we try to meet the wants and the needs of Durham community members and our employees. This year, the wants and the needs were very significant and the challenge for our administration was to find a way to meet many of those needs, especially those of our dedicated employees. It was just the right thing to do. As with past budgets, I appreciate the guidance and support of our city's elected leaders, Mayor Leonardo Williams, Mayor Pro Tem Mark Anthony Middleton, and council members Nate Baker, Javier Caballero, Chelsea Cook, Deidreana Freeman, and Carl Rist. Their steady guidance and direction have been crucial to ensuring that our residents' voices are heard and reflected in our budget. During this budget cycle, City Council and our staff spent time considering the many challenges that faced Durham during the two retreats held in February and March of this year. We also heard from many residents. On this slide, you see residents participating in our community conversations in January. And throughout the year, our employees made their voices heard about their pay. Throughout this presentation, you will see how this budget demonstrates the values that make our city a great place to live, work, play, and visit for so many. Again this year, as I did last year, I want to make it very clear that I do value our employees. It is no secret that the city, like most municipalities and even some private sector employers, are still, still have shortages uh, in several areas, especially our public safety and operations departments, areas that are critical to providing vital services, including keeping our city safe, providing safe drinking water, and collecting solid waste for our residents. I can assure you that my gratitude for the service our employees provide to our residents is unending. Because of that, recruiting and retaining staff continues to be a top priority. That's why we launched a recruitment campaign this year that is focused on employees, our own employees, sharing why the city of Durham is a great place to work. You hear from our own employees exactly why they came to the city and why they stay. Hopefully you've seen some of these ads on Go Durham buses, on television, and on our social media. Look for more to come next year. Since November, we have worked diligently to determine how to pay our employees fairly and equitably across our organization, no matter the job that they do, and to make our already great benefits even more attractive at the lowest cost possible. A key part of this effort was hiring a firm to conduct a compensation and classification study to review our pay structures and recommend adjustments because of the findings. I'd like to thank our hardworking human resources team for their long hours, for engaging our employees, and for their leadership during this time. We'll talk more about the study results that, ha that ha the study results, results that informed my proposed budget. Now let's look at the fiscal year 24-25 budget by the numbers. The total proposed budget for 24-25 is $667.8 million compared to $610 million last year. That is an increase of $57.8 million 
or 9.47% increase. And that includes the city's general fund and all other funds that are highlighted here that you will hear more about during this presentation. Before I get to the next slide, I want you to know that sometimes doing the right thing isn't easy, but it is always right. As you probably know, buying groceries, filling up your gas tank, and practically everything that's needed to run your household costs more. These cost increases affect how city government operates too. In the past four years, despite increasing costs to operate the city, we have only raised taxes, property taxes twice, two cents in the fiscal year 21-22 and 0.6 cents, which is a little more than a half a cent in fiscal year 22-23. Yes, growth in our strong local economy, which has outpaced other similar sized cities, has helped us to keep property tax rates, rate increases down, our economy is still performing well, as you can see on the slide, with real property growth at 4.83%, generating 24.5 million in additional revenues compared to last year. We project sales tax revenues to increase 5%, which is about $5 million more this coming year compared to last year. Based on that projection, we're budgeting one $104.9 million in sales tax revenue. Most other sources of revenue, including our occupancy tax and our state shared revenues, are projected to increase slightly. While growth certainly increases our revenue to help cover these increasing costs, we need more revenue to accomplish our primary priority with this budget to implement the recommendations of our employee pay study. Additionally, you will note that we have limited new projects and program expansions. This year, to maintain core services and align employee pay with the market, a property tax increase is needed. I am proposing a property tax increase of 3.85 cents, bringing our current rate of 55 0.77 cents to 59.62 cents per 100 of assessed value. This means the owner of a house valued at $254,421, which is the median home tax value in Durham, will receive a city tax bill of about $1,517 next year. With the, with the proposed increase in the property tax rate, this annual bill would be approximately $153 more than last year's bill. The proposed general fund budget, which funds core city services, is $306 million, and it represents a $24.4 million increase, which is an 8.7% increase over the fiscal year 23-24 budget, of 281.5 million. This increase is due to higher personnel costs based on recommendations resulting from our recent pay study, which I'll share more about later in this presentation this evening. The general fund supports many of the services that the city provides, such as public safety, fire and police services, emergency communications and parks and recreation. It also supports employee compensation, our street paving program, and our CIP projects, which are capital improvement program projects. While Durham continues to outperform national and state financial indicators over the past few years, we continue to monitor current indicators and economic trends very closely, and we will always prioritize being good stewards of the taxpayers' resources. Some fee increases are proposed to cover rising costs also, including those on this slide. We're proposing increases to our water, sewer, and our stormwater rates. The rate changes were recently approved at the City Council's May 6th regular business meeting. For your information this evening, these new rates include an average monthly increase of $2.66 for water and sewer, 
and $1.55 increase for a typical storm, residential stormwater customer per month, effective July 1st. Also, you'll see here that our parking rates will stay the same. In addition to market pay adjustments, proposed general fund expenditures include the cost to provide benefits, which have risen slightly, and our net operating expenditures, which have increased a little more than 2% uh, or $977,000. The city continues to have access to a strong fund balance because of effective management of our resources and the city council's policy on the use of fund balance, otherwise known as our savings. Because of that, we continue to be above the minimum that city council's policy requires. I am proposing appropriating $8.4 million from fund balance for one-time departmental costs including $4 million for street maintenance. I am always happy to share with you that your city government continues to enjoy a AAA general obligation bond rating from all three rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch. What this means is that your city can borrow money or issue bonds for major projects at lower interest rates, saving taxpayer dollars. And that's significant as there is an item on the council agenda tonight authorizing us to apply to the local government commission to move forward with the $200 million bond referendum for streets, sidewalks, and parks projects. If approved to move forward, the bond referendum will come before our voters in November. As always, we have used our strategic plan developed with input from our employees, our residents, our elected officials, and other key stakeholders to guide how we manage our budget. While we continue to use the priorities of our strategic plan to provide services and programs, this year, new budget requests were driven by two top priorities. But we will continue to focus on providing affordable housing, public safety, and other strategic goals items that I will discuss a little later. However, this year, providing competitive pay for our employees was the very top of my priority list. A second priority is significant investment in our capital improvement plan to continue to fund existing projects, moving them closer to the finish line, as well as beginning funding for new projects. Because we can't cover every aspect of the budget tonight, I encourage you to review the complete proposed budget that is now available at durhamnc.gov budget. It is impossible to carry out our work as, as a city government without our dedicated employees, whether it is putting out fires, providing good and safe drinking water, collecting solid waste, or coming to the aid of our residents, referred to by our heart team as our neighbors when they need us most. We absolutely must pay our employees fair wages by providing competitive market-aligned salaries along with providing great employee benefits. Last year, the City Council approved funding for a compensation and classification study to see how City of Durham wages compared with other organizations, other governments, as well as private firms doing the same or similar work that we do in the city of Durham. That study, which is in progress, has already told us in the compensation phase, not just that we've fallen behind the market in pay, but by how much. Here on this chart, you can see how far behind we have fallen in our four pay plans. In this proposed budget, I am recommending we increase these pay plans as shown to bring them in line with the current market. Additionally, to ensure equitable, equitable pay, general step plan employees will now receive 5% increases each year added to base instead of 4% for effective job performance when funded in the annual adopted budget. 
Also to help lower costs for this year's market pay adjustments, increases for the highest paid salaried employees, including deputy city managers, directors, and assistant directors are capped at 5%. We believe these proposed market adjustments added to our pay for performance increases will help us to retain our current employees and attract new employees into our organization at every level. I'd like to point out that it is increasingly important to recruit officers to our police department. Note here that first year police officer pay will rise from $47,938 to $54,817. This is a 14.35% increase. And that pay adjustment and that pay adjustment increases for all ranks within the police department plan will range up to 22.5%. Our first year firefighter pay will rise from $43,825 to $51,559, a 17.65% increase. And that pay adjustment increases for five of the seven ranks in fire will range up to 7.65%. The total cost for all our market rate and new pay policy adjustments is $28.5 million. In addition to the market rate and pay policy adjustments just discussed, I am also recommending that we continue pay for performance increases as shown. The Durham minimum livable wage will also be adjusted from $18.46 per hour to $19.58 per hour, effective July 1st, which equals $40,726 annually. There are no full-time employees currently being paid at or below the Durham's, Durham's minimum livable wage. Because the city's operating budget is made up mostly of personnel expenses, employee pay and benefits, each, each year we critically examine the need for new positions. This year, three new positions are proposed, which will be paid for by development fees. Now, let's transition to our other top priority, our capital improvement plan and look at why it is so important this year. The capital improvement budget includes a little over $232.1 million for new projects and to complete existing ones. We have more than 40 capital projects in this year's proposal. Too many to go through here tonight, but you can find the complete proposed list on our website. To point out a few projects, as you may know, due to lead levels and other contaminants in the soil at five of our city parks, we had to close some playgrounds and other areas in these parks last year. The soil contamination is the result of common practices many, many decades ago, not just here in Durham, but in many other cities across the United States to dump ashes from former landfills in public areas that later became parks. Now, thanks to modern environmental science, we know that certain levels of lead and other substances found in soil are not safe. We have budgeted five million to begin cleanup of the soil in these five parks with guidance from the North Carolina Department of Environmental Quality and our community members. Our priority is to get this re remediation underway soon with local funding while waiting for decisions on state assistance for the remediation in full. We invite you to join our virtual public forum this Wednesday for an update on this important project. Please visit our website shown here to register for this forum and learn more about our efforts to address this issue impacting areas of East Durham, East End, Lyon, Northgate, and Walltown Parks. Also included in our CIP, are sustainability projects totaling more than $4.7 million that will help propel us toward our carbon neutrality and renewable energy goals. You can learn more about our sustain sustainability goals on our website shown here. I am happy to announce there are several new CIP projects along with the continuation of other projects aimed at improving pedestrian and bike safety throughout Durham. 
Related to road safety, we recently hired an experienced Vision Zero coordinator to develop and implement strategies to help move us toward our ambitious goal of no traffic deaths or serious injuries, especially as it involves pedestrians and cyclists. She assures us, like plans in other cities such as Alexandria, Virginia, that a strategic action plan with specific and time-bound implementation actions can be accomplished through focused resources and collaboration. We have, pro have proposed funding in the CIP specifically for Vision Zero safety initiatives. Parks and recreation areas, trails, and open spaces play a huge part in making Durham a great place to play exercise, and yes, even relax. Many of these projects totaling more than $12.5 million are already underway. Three million will be used for pedestrian bridge repairs at several of our parks, including Indian Trail, West Point on the Eno, Walltown, Wrightwood, Sandy Creek, and Sherwood Parks. Of course, there are many other general capital projects contained in the capital improvement program lists, such as the Hill and Dale Golf Course driving range, transportation projects, and general repairs of city property. As always, these projects were prioritized using an equity lens or screening questions to determine who would benefit from the improvement and who would be burdened. The assessment also looks at unintended outcomes of the proposed projects. I am proposing that we continue capital commitments for our fleet replacement program, for our street maintenance and repaving, and for our sidewalk repairs, which our residents continually tell us is a top priority through our annual resident satisfaction survey. Here's a short summary of our water and sewer, storm water, and solid waste projects. Creating and promoting strategy, strategies and programs to ensure that all our community members share in Durham's prosperity continues to be a top priority for us. We continue to make progress in our efforts to provide affordable housing. I am proposing 16.4 million, which is over 2 million more for affordable housing investments compared to last year funded with a tax rate appropriation of 3.38 cents, two cents totaling 8.5 million is included for affordable housing projects and services, and 1.38 cents generating $5.9 million will be used to pay the debt service for the $95 million affordable housing bond. All of the dedicated housing fund is applied to Forever Home Durham. Forever Home Durham is our $160 million program creating affordable opportunities for our renters as well as our homeowners. Through new construction, property repairs, and essential housing services, we are building a more inclusive and livable community. Continuing over the next few years, the $95 million affordable housing bond combined with local and federal funding will be used to invest $160 million to reach affordable housing goals established for the program. On these next slides, you can see the progress that has already been made to date, along with upcoming milestones. City Council has dedicated $13.5 million of our American Rescue Plan Act or ARPA funding for affordable housing projects. And our partners in Durham County government have matched the city's ARPA funding with an additional 13.5 million, bringing the total ARPA investment for affordable housing to $27 million. While we know achieving our housing goals will take time, we're making significant strides toward ensuring we provide housing for many neighbors who might feel left out of Durham's prosperity. I want to encourage everyone to visit our Forever Home Durham webpage to stay informed on our progress. Now let's touch on our transit goals. Continuing fare-free Go Durham service is a priority. Even though federal COVID response funding is ending, 
This budget proposal includes the continuation of fare free service for our transit riders through the next budget year. As you saw on the property tax rate slide earlier in this presentation, 3.75 cents of our property tax rate supports transit services. Local property tax support, the Durham County Transit Tax, and state and federal funding deliver a $41.1 million investment in transit services, which is a 1.5% increase over last year. In addition to supporting our current Go Durham bus system, the budget includes $14.9 million to support planned service expansions. As I continue highlights of my proposed budget, I am happy to say our community safety team and their heart program continues to help many experiencing behavioral crisis in our city. Over the last year, they have expanded their service citywide operating seven days a week, I am confident we will continue to see significant progress as this program continues to greatly impact our neighbors. Next year, our community safety team will be tasked with creating a program for a new Office of Survivor Care to support survivors of violent crime. This program, starting off as a pilot, comes after two years of listening to the needs and concerns of our community members. We are continuing our support of the Durham Expunction and Restoration Program to make it easier for those who need legal help to remove charges and convictions from their records and to restore a suspended or revoked driver's license. Also included in this year's budget proposal is $650,000 for Legal Aid of North Carolina to continue administering the eviction diversion program for low-income renters. We want Durham to continue to be a welcoming community for everyone. This proposed budget includes $250,000 to Justice Matters to continue an immigrant legal defense fund providing legal services to newly arrived refugees and immigrants. To further support our youth and our Durham families, I am proposing a summer camp grant fund of $170,000 to expand summer camp opportunities through community partnerships that provide quality activities and experiences to our youth in their neighborhoods while school is out. In the coming year, we will launch a civilian traffic investigation program to respond to minor property damage only accidents, freeing up our police officers to handle more serious incidents and other high priority calls. Our police department plans to have this program up and running by March of 2025. In the upcoming year, we also included $1 million to support the Haiti Reborn Justice Movement, which works to prevent gun violence in Durham through a holistic approach. Finally, $1 million has been allocated to the Guaranteed Income Project with a goal of addressing financial instability and strengthening support for eligible community members. Now, I've presented highlights from the proposed budget. It is now time for our elected leadership and our community members to take a closer look, a detailed look. My proposed budget includes a tax increase, which is needed to do what is right for our employees to pay them competitively and equitably. Our city council and our staff will review the details at next week's budget sessions on May 29th and May 30th, beginning at 9 a.m. each day in the committee room on the second floor of City Hall. Due to limited space in our committee room, we invite everyone to watch the live stream on our YouTube channel and on our website. We also encourage our community to share your thoughts at our budget public hearing, which will take place during our June 3rd City Council meeting beginning at 7 p.m. We remain committed to transparency in this budget as well as in total operations. Therefore, the complete proposed budget document is now available for your review on our website at durhamnc.gov slash budget. We continue to be a city many are proud to call home. 
as well as a destination of choice for visitors and our new residents. While we acknowledge our challenges as a community, Durham is still a dynamic city. And in fact, in, the, in our mayor's words, Durham is dope. You better go ahead, Madam Manager, I love it. My staff and I are particularly proud that our organization was recognized in Wallet Hub's last ranking as one of the best run cities in America and the highest ranking city in North Carolina. We don't take that designation lightly and we will continue to work hard to maintain your confidence in how your city government is managed. Durham continues to compile accolades, too many to mention here tonight, but regardless of recognition and accolades, we continue to work together and partner with local organizations to help make our city a great place to live, work, and play for everyone. You can learn more about my proposed budget and our operations by following us on social media, watching our videos, listening to our podcasts, subscribing to our newsletters, and visiting our websites. We work hard to communicate what we're doing in many ways, and we remain dedicated to keeping you informed on our work and our progress using these channels. Finally, on behalf of our staff, I want to thank our mayor and city council members for your leadership. Our administration looks forward to working with you and listening to our community as we finalize a budget that reflects this city's values for all who call Durham home. Thank you.